In today's machine learning and video, we're going to be taking a look at the lasso regression. We're going to go over a little bit of the theory before we end up coding this in Python with the help of the scikit-learn library. And this is just one video in my full series of scikit-learn and also regression models. So with that out of the way, essentially, what is a lasso regression? Well, it stands for least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. And this is often called L1 regularization. Now, essentially, what is regularization? Well, it addresses overfitting. And overfitting is when you have a model that tends to be a little bit too complex. And it, when we run it, it performs well in our training data set. But when it comes to our testing data set, it performs pretty poorly. And what our lasso regression will do is it will get rid of those useless features, essentially some of the independent variables. It'll turn the coefficient of these to a zero, which is known as automatic feature selection. And because of that, what we're going to have is a little bit more of a simpler model, which is a lot less prone to overfitting. And with the theory out of the way, let's start coding this. All right, I have a brand new Jupyter notebook. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is going to be bringing in our data set. And unlike last two times, which I did chat GPT, this time we're going to be just grabbing our data from sklearn data sets. So from sklearn.datasets import fetch California housing. Now, this is kind of like the revised version. I think it was Boston housing that got removed from sklearn data sets. And there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that I watched in the past um, that had it, but that data sets depreciated. Now there's California housing. Can't remember the exact reason why. Um, but if you want to learn more about this data set, there is this SK Learn link over here, for the California housing data sets. It shows you essentially how you can import this in. And then some of the different information as some medium income, house age, average rooms, bedrooms, populations, occupancy, then latitude and also longitude. So no missing values. This is a very clean data set, as you can see over here. And um, yeah, we're just gonna use that one because it's super easy to throw in over here. That said, let's uh, bring this in fully. So I'm just gonna name this as like CA housing. We're gonna say that's equal to, and you can just copy and paste that over here. So I don't wanna type that again. And then we can set up our X and Y. So X equals and we're gonna say CA housing again. I don't wanna type that out. We're gonna say data. And then our Y is gonna be the target. So Y equals, and then copy that, and then just put target in here. And essentially we now have our X and Y. If you wanna see all of our feature names, right? You can just go over here, the feature names. And these are all here. Again, you could just go straight through this documentation and search it, but why not, right? And then if you just wanna see the target names, we can just go over here and just put target, right? And then we get the median house value, which again, you could just grab that from here, but I just wanted to show you how that works. Okay. Now, like every other machine learning problem, we're gonna to have to train test split if you're watching this video on Lasso, I assume that you already know what that is, but I will still explain it in case someone is still kind of new and in the regression series. And this is, I think, one of the first videos um, within it. So essentially, we always are going to bring in train test split. And we're going to do x train x test y train y test equals we'll throw a train test split over here x y we're going to say test size equals 0 0.2 and then random state equals 19. i think that's joey vado's number so that's why we're going to do random state great baseball player that rumored to retire so if you're a baseball fan you know if not don't worry about it all right let me explain how train test split works right we have our x and y we're Kind of transferring those to train and then also a test 20 percent is going to be in our test set 80 percent is going to be in our train set random state 19 so that way you guys can replicate the same exact results that i'm doing here in this specific video and you always need to split up your data from training and also testing 
Uh, you can see some of the different metrics behind that. And also it's not good um, to train your model on 100% of the time. All right, so now we're gonna bring in the standard scaler. Essentially, if we don't bring in a standard scaler, we're gonna get some pretty bad results. Um, this is pretty common with both the lasso and also a ridge regression, which ridge regression will be out uh, shortly after this video, I believe. Um, so anyways, we're gonna just go over here and scalar equals standard scalar. And essentially what this is gonna do is gonna make our mean zero on this side of things. And again, it'll give us more accurate results. And I have a full video on the standard scalar. And of course this doesn't work because I have to import it, right? So we're gonna say from sklearn.preprocessing import standard scalar. Now this should work over here and this data is pretty easy to scale. So you can just do like X train like this and we're gonna just say scalar dot fit underscore transform. And just throw your X train in here. Okay, and we can do the same thing with X test too. So throw X test in both of these. And now our data is gonna be essentially scaled, which is really nice. Now we can bring in our lasso regression. So what most of you guys watch the video for, we can just say from sklearn.linear model imports lasso, okay? And I'm not gonna put any parameters in this one first. We're gonna show you some hyperparameter tuning in a second, but we're just gonna very basic level, right? So we call our lasso over here. Now we can fit our data. So we can just do fit, you throw in your X train, you throw in your Y train, just like that. Now lasso is fit to the training data, which is fantastic. Now we can bring in a few different metrics and I've covered these already in the first two regression videos. Import mean absolute error. And we're gonna bring our mean squared error. And then we're gonna bring in our R2 score. We see these a ton with regression problems. Before we run these though, you're gonna have to do your Y prediction. So Y pred equals lasso dot predict like this. And then you just throw an X test. And I've explained it before also, but essentially we have X test, we have Y test. You also need to do a prediction because you want to see how close like these predictions are to your Y tests. It's a little different, but it did confuse me at first. So I always try to call that out. Okay, and now we can essentially see how these work. So you just throw your mean absolute error over here. And then we're going to throw our Y tests. And then we're going to put over here your Y prediction. And then we get our score of 0.91. Then we can do the same exact thing for our mean squared. And these aren't the best results at 1.32. Then we can throw in our R2 score and you'll see why. Yeah, this R2 score is horrible. This is like zero, right? To the negative five power, model's not very accurate. So, all right, we what we should be doing now is bringing in a parameter grid uh, because we're going to do some hyperparameter tuning. Now, the value that we're going to be tuning in this model is called an alpha, and it's the strength of a regularization penalty. Essentially, with your lasso regression, you like I wouldn't say it's a must, but you I highly, highly recommend to do some parameter tuning, especially with this alpha, because your model will get a lot more accurate specifically with it. So what I like to do first is just do a parameter grid like this. And I will call it, there's other parameters as well, but alpha is the most common uh, to do. And again, check the scikit-learn documentation if you want to tune your models specifically however you want. Again, it does take a bit longer with the more parameters that you do throw in here, but your the best bang for your buck is going to be for your alpha. Okay. So we're gonna do 0 0.001, we'll throw in another zero right here. 0 0.001, 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then 
then 10, then 100. Just keeping it pretty basic over here. So that is in here. Next, for hyperparameter tuning, you're always going to need your grid search CV. So from sklearn.model selection import, and you're going to do grid search CV like this. And here's our fun part, right? So now we're going to do our lasso, not last, but lasso CV. We're going to need that equal to our grid search CV. Okay. Let's throw in our model over here, which we're just going to do basic lasso, which we called a little bit earlier. We have our param grid and I could have typed that, but I'm just going to paste that over here. We're going to cross validate three. So essentially this is going to run three times how many I have here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to run 21 times. If I add another one, it's going to go 24. So why not, right? I don't think it'll make, I don't think we're going to have an alpha of a thousand, but throw that in there, right? Um, essentially that's why this balloons up really fast. And then you do end jobs equals negative one. And we have called this, but this runs fast because it runs slow once you fit your data into your, and you're going to fit your X train. And then you're going to also fit your Y train, throw that in here. And this will probably take a second and boom, we have a grid search CV, right? And you see all these different alpha values that we put over here. Uh, but this doesn't tell us essentially what our best alpha value is. And guess what? I'm gonna show you in a second because what we're gonna do is run these all over again. So I'm just gonna do another one. I'm gonna say Y prediction two essentially is lasso dot predict, but I need to also put in here CV because we just changed that up. So we have this in here now, and then I can literally just copy all these once again. I'll change them all at the very end, right? And um, we'll see how much more accurate this is. So we have our mean absolute error, we have our mean squared error, and then we have our R2 score. So now we're gonna put Y prediction two in each of these, and we're gonna start comparing our scores. So first we have our mean absolute error, we have 0 0.535. Over here we have 0 0.911. And essentially a lower number is better, so we've already seen an improvement on this side of things. 0 0.52, right, in comparison to 1.32. Again, really good in comparison. And then our R2 score is 0 0.6. Now, is it a good R2 score? No, it's not. But compared to zero, this is a phenomenal upgrade. So you might be wondering, what was the best alpha value? Essentially, what worked the best? Well, that's uh, pretty easy to do. So we can just do lasso, we can go CV, and then we can just put over here best, not nest, but best estimator, another over here, and 0 0.001. So this one right here was our best alpha value for this one. And if you wanna see essentially even more metrics of this best model, there's a few different ways how you can do it. I'm just gonna create a new model. I'm just gonna say this is lasso three equals lasso, Again, it's not the optimal way to do it, but I'm just gonna show it for you guys over here. So because this is essentially how you throw your parameter in here, right? Your alpha value, just throw that directly in here. Super easy, right? Again, you can just fit the data, dot fit. This is assuming that you put that in here, Y train, right? So now we have that over here. And then you can find your intercept. So lasso three, you can put dot intercept. Okay, put that here at the end. And we can see our intercept on this one is 2.06. Okay. And lastly, we can see all of our coefficients. So let's just throw in our coefficient over here. So we'll just say lasso three dot coefficients and underscore over here. And these are all of our different coefficients. So what our lasso model does try to do with some of these coefficients, the closer to zero, the more it kind of disregards it. And like in this format, it's probably not the best. So what we're gonna have to do is, I mean, what I like to do is put it into a data frame. So we're just gonna import pandas as PD, which I always start the videos with, but it's towards the very end this time. Uh, then we're gonna just do our feature names. And we already have these from earlier. So I'm just going to put this over here, right? And just copy this, essentially put this over here. 
for our feature names. I don't like the formatting on this, so I'm just gonna tweak this for a second. Maybe it's my OCD, but I think this looks way better. So leave our feature names over here. And then we're just gonna name df equals pd.dataframe like this. And essentially you're just gonna throw in over here. First thing what we're gonna do is name our feature names. And then we're gonna just put that, right? And just put a basic comma. We'll say coefficients like this, right? Nothing too special. And then we'll just grab lasso three coefficient and nothing because we have to put our DF over here and check this out. So we have our feature names and then the coefficients that are associated with it. So that is essentially how you build this out. So then we take a look very at the very end with this data frame that we just called, right? And essentially we see the coefficients um, with each of these different features that we called from above. And these are the final results. So that is essentially the lasso model. Again, kind of just a very quick recap of what I did, right? Fetch California housing. I said Cal housing to X and also Y, right? We don't really need the feature name target. Train test split on your X and Y. We scale the data because it's super important for a lasso model and also a ridge model. We set our X train and X test to that. We brought in our lasso model, right? Fit it with the X train. And we looked at some metrics like the mean absolute error, mean squared error, R2 score. We have those there. Then we want to do some hyperparameter tuning. The one to take a look at on this one is our alpha. So I just threw in a bunch of different values over here, grid searched it, got our final value essentially for that over here. Once we ran these again, it was 0 0.001. And I just made another lasso over here just to show you what the parameter looks like if you're going to call it from scratch. X train, Y train, we see our intercept over here. We also see our coefficients. And if you wanna see how the coefficients map to each of the different features, you're gonna to have to build out a data frame or you can just go back and forth and look at the feature names like that. I'd rather just build data frame and boom, we are done now with Lasso. So I hope you guys did learn something new in this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's 100% for free but it does allow YouTube to promote this channel to other people that may be learning data science and I'd really appreciate it. Now, if you're looking for another video to watch, I have one over here on ridge regressions. Often it's kind of paired with lasso. So it's a really good one to start learning from.